very much. Uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, the kind invitation. Uh, thanks also to Professor Shekerji Oru before to set the scene. <laughs> I think we see the challenge before we are. Uh, renewable energies are part of the solution. And I would like to tell you about another element of hope, which is digitalization. Now, digitalization is not everything. Uh, basically, digitalization will help us make things more efficient. Uh, and digitalization also has some drawbacks, as I will show to you. So the title of my presentation is about the digitalization of energy and where the potential of this digitalization actually lies. Now, <clears throat> digitalization, very briefly, is about basically data, generating data, exchanging data, storing data, analyzing data, ever more data, ever more rapidly at ever lower costs. And I think that's the overall framework within which we are. From these data come platforms, digital platforms, which appear to be the new business model of digitalization. And after this slide, I will go into concrete examples. I will first start, I think we have good examples of what digitalization did in, in telecom and transport. And now I think we want to explore what digitalization can, will, should do in electricity and energy more generally. Now, <clears throat> I just to illustrate what platforms are, I illustrate and I think this, we all have examples from Amazon, uh, Airbnb and the traditional, I mean, what we now call the traditional digital platforms, uh, <clears throat> where we have suppliers, buyers, everything is fragmented, the whole supply chain is uh, in a lot of pieces, and digitalization basically helps us uh, to coordinate, it's a coordination mechanism. Data allow us to coordinate more efficiently and to reduce coordination costs. That's, I think, what digitalization basically does. There are plenty of other things, and I work sometimes in areas of smart city where people think smart city is a happy city. I think a smart city is simply a more efficient city. A, smart, a digitally functioning system is a more efficient system. So digital platforms, they will use these data that are generated on, by all these fragmented actors, by the suppliers, by the buyers, uh, and they will analyze these data, and that's where algorithms become so important. Uh, artificial intelligence, basically, will make a, an intelligent use of these data in order to make, in this case, the digital, the, the, the supply chain more efficient. Now, <clears throat> there is an economic piece to this. It's not just about technology. Uh, it, the economic piece, of course, is that we are dealing with two-sided markets. Later, I will show you multi-sided markets where we have direct network effects that is, the more data are generated, the more, the more elements are connected to the, this digital platform, the better it is for everyone, and the system can be, become more efficient thanks to that two-sided market. It's a typical, we know this from, telecom, from the telecom sector, from actually from the traditional infrastructures, the more customers we have in an electricity system, the better it is for everyone because the costs will go down. And so those, is, those are the traditional network effects in, the inf in all the infrastructures. But in digitalization, this is exacerbated. It's even stronger. The network effects are even stronger. And the algorithms make this even more efficient. They can coordinate things even more efficiently. So 
The problem here, of course, is that uh, what everybody says, that these platform lead to winner takes it all. There, how much more room is there for another Amazon, for another Airbnb, uh, for, an R, uh, for another booking.com? So these network effects actually lead to some sort of monopolization, and I will come back to regulation at the end. So, we have efficiency gains, but we also have new digital monopolies that, uh, that emerge. Now, <clears throat> if we look at telecom, uh, just as an example, is the traditional example, telecom operators are typical two, typical two-sided markets. The more callers, the better it is for the receivers. The more receivers, the better it is for the callers. Uh, we have digital platforms. Who is still doing telephone? You're doing, you're doing Skype, you're doing WhatsApp. Those are digital platforms. They don't own the infrastructure at all. They basically use the infrastructure, but they are the new interface with the customer. And this is the result of it. Traditional telecom operators are what we called platformed. They are reduced to simply um, servants of the digital platform uh, <clears throat> and the customer relationship, the, the, the link to the customer moves away from the traditional operators to the new platforms. The value added, of course, also moves to the platform. So there is a, this is the economic dimension of digitalization in the sense that the value added the ones who really make the money from this are no longer the infrastructures, but the platforms that come on top of the infrastructure. Of course, they need the infrastructures, but they will use it simply as a functioning, a functioning bit, not, not and, and that has all kinds of, of consequences for innovation and, and things like that. So we should be thinking about that when we talk about innovation. Is it just limited? to the digital platforms, but before we have seen, we also need innovation, I'll come back to electricity, we also need innovation in energy generation, we need in innovation in the infrastructures and things like that. So if all the value added is moving to the platforms, where will the money come from to innovate in energy production, in energy savings and things like that, okay? Now, <clears throat> content. We know telecom, the big issue is content, and the telecom operators are, have a hard time to actually move into that content area because the platforms take the content, and that's where they make the value added. Now, I'll take another example before I move to energy. And this is actually something that already, we, we see it very clearly in transport. We have a very fragmented supply chain for mobility. People walk, they take the bike, they take the tram, they take the bus, they take the metro, they take the car, they take, use a parking, then they take the train and the airplane, and every actor has its own logic, its own business models, it's very badly coordinated. And digital platforms, will allow for a much more efficient coordination of this very fragmented mobility. Actually, now we talk about mobility before we just talked about transport modes. So this is a progress. Uh, an inefficiently coordinated transport system becomes a more efficiently coordinated mobility system thanks to digital platforms you waste more, people waste more time, there is less pollution, there is, uh, there is better, uh, timetables are better coordinated, integrated ticketing, all these kind of things. This is mostly happening at the urban level. We see it in big metropolitan areas where mobility solutions called mobility as a service are apps Pure apps, they don't own anything, they don't own any infrastructure, but they offer you a mobility solution to get from A to B in the most efficient way. Uh, same as telecom before, these operators who operate actually the buses and the, trans and the taxis and everything, 
become platformed, they become an element of a digital, digitally integrated, more efficient mobility system, mainly happening at the urban metropolitan level, not really at the national level. Like telecom is really global, this, these are more, I would say, local solutions. Now let's move to electricity. Let me first say where electricity is different. Electricity, I think, cannot be platformed in exactly the same way as mobility. Okay? And I would like to, it can still be platformed, and I will show you how, but I would like to work with you in, in a few slides how this will happen. So we have a traditional system with generation, centralized generation, transmission system operator, typically national, local, regional distributors, and the customers are connected to the distributors. That's, that's how electricity works. But because of unbundling, because of liberalization, we have already separated somehow, because now we have trading platforms where generators and customers or distributors can exchange electricity. So this is actually also thanks to digitalization that trading was even made possible to begin with. Uh, this very um, good evolution in the electricity sector, it brings liquidity, it, br it, brings, it brings efficiency, has, has of course also le led to more unbundling and therefore to the need for more coordination. You see where I'm going with this, digitalization as an answer to the coordination problems. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the technological dyna dynamics of this, uh, and this has nothing to do with digitalization, led mainly to two things, namely to the fact that <laughs> interface technologies emer emerged. And that is, a, there is an econ a purely economic explanation for this. As you unbundle, trading becomes one thing. And, and actually, the whole European liberalization model is built on this. We separate generation trading from, the, from transport from the infrastructure. Okay? That, that's the logic of liberalization, European style liberalization, which by the way, most of the countries in the world now follow, including Turkey. But this leads to the fact that there is a need for interface. The inefficiencies are now at the interface and therefore it is not astonishing that the new technological developments are precisely at this interface. Smart meters, are they part of the grid or are they part of generation? You don't know exactly there. Batteries, are they storage or are they uh, as, as a technology, as an infrastructure, or are they also a way of balancing, of, of, balancing, of management of loads and things like that? Okay? So we have new interface technologies. We have prosumers now because of decentralized generation Smart meters lead to demand-side management. Um, prosumers can buy and, and sell on, and, and, and become more independent. And now, thanks to a lot of decentralized generation, we can build energy communes. So a the, 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 the message is we become, thanks to all these, I'm not yet talking about digitalization, thanks to all these technological dynamics that has been triggered by liberalization, we now have a more decentralized and a more fragmented system, more flexible system if you want, but there is also more need for coordination. And that's where digitalization also comes here. So traditionally, this was the model. Generation, TSO, this distribution system operator, customer. The, the model, this evolves into, and that's more speculative now, but uh, it's more speculative than what I told you before as mobility as a service, which is already real, uh, but we will move into digital energy platforms uh, where consumers, thanks to digitalization, 
are connected to each other and in exactly the same way distribution system operators will be platformed they will be simply distributors and platforms will be virtual uh, that have they don't need to own any assets at all in this kind of system okay so that is that is the general evolution in which we are going and now I want to go one step further because there is no reason why all of this will stop at electricity. In exactly the same way as I showed you before transport where we have cars and taxis and buses and everything in the same platform, it is very likely that all the different energy vectors will be connected to the platform. The next one to come is certainly gas. Uh, gas heating, uh, uh, district, district heating. Uh, we already talk about smart houses and, and saving of energy like this. And electricity generated through waste, uh, waste water, uh, batteries, as I said before. Start. So there is a very big likelihood that all these different energy vectors can be coordinated by digital platforms in exactly the same way as the different mobility, uh, mobility vectors were coordinated by mobility as a service and we could go into something that is called energy as a service. New providers, platform providers that manage the energy systems without owning anything in the energy systems. Now, of course, I have heard this morning, all the traditional operators will, maybe just one word on strategy. Of course, all, all these actors that are being platformed want to be the platform themselves. Okay? So <clears throat> we, we have heard this morning from the energy companies, they are building their own platforms essentially to avoid to be platformed by somebody else. The same evolution has already happened in transport where all the big rail companies want to have their platform, but basically they lost, okay? So the mobility as a service platform is something that comes from totally outside, not from the transport industry. And there is a big chance that platformization in energy will also come from outside and not necessarily from, so this is rather a wake-up call I'm make, making to you. Don't you don't want to be platformed. You want to also control the platform. Now, there is good news in the sense that an electricity does not work in exactly the same way as a traditional retail chain or as telecom or as mobility. And that's my point. I think we will see digital platforms coordinating the fragmented electricity and energy systems, but <coughs> This will remain decentralized, local, regional, uh, and therefore, therefore it may be less attractive for these big global players like Amazon and Google and things like that. There is a room for decentralization because traditional coordination, unlike, unless what you often hear that the TSOs are finished and everything will be done decentrally and things like that, Personally, I don't believe this. I think we need a, a, a national this transmission system operator that coordinates all these decentralized platforms. And I think that will be the new challenge, uh, how, how the TSO is not interacting with the distribution system operators. He will be interacting with these new di digital platforms that coordinate already at the decentralized level. And I will finish here because that leads to all kind of challenges for regulation. Uh, how do you regulate the interface between a digital platform and the TSO? How do you regulate digital platforms which are the new monopolies? There are plenty of questions, uh, regulatory questions at the interface between energy and digitalization, but also at the interface, and I think it's more general, probably these platforms should all be regulated in the same way. They, they, they touch mobility, they touch telecom, they touch energy, and often they are the same players. 
Thank you very much. Professor Dr. Matthias Finger, thank you very much.